Hey everybody, this is Joe for the Joe's Project Broadcast, and you're watching the Joe's Project TV right here on YouTube. And if you're watching this, thank you for watching. Uh, leave a comment if you're interested in what I'm about to say. Uh, so, I'm going to discuss this subject for just a brief amount of time. This won't be a real long video. Uh, but, actually, this band was brought to my attention from my son. And, uh, quite some time back. Um... And I always just kind of brushed it off. I was just kind of like, yeah, that's cool, man. That's 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 cool. And he, he is a huge fan of this band. And he's actually seen them probably three or four times live uh, when they've came close to the area. Um, so, and, uh, <laughs> so we were talking on the phone, um, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago or so. And he said, uh, Steel Panther has released uh, their new song, uh, video too as well on YouTube and I said really what's what is this song called because they always have these silly song titles and silly lyrics and you know and he said uh, you're always going to be a whore <laughs> that was the name of the song and I was like oh good lord mighty man so uh, he said but you should check it out sometime it's actually a really good song and uh, when we went to Guitar Center together or something like that he would bring his you know got his phone and uh, he would plug the aux cord from his phone to my uh, stereo and he let me hear some of the Steel Panther stuff and I was just kind of like yeah man that's cool but it's kind of it kind of I just dismissed it really I was just like yeah that's cool but it's like they're making fun of that stuff but when I really really buckled down and and did some research and stuff that's what they're supposed to be doing they're they're characters in this band right and they're just having a lot of fun and um and uh Really, you know, I did watch that new video and listen to that new song probably about a dozen times back to back, and I was floored. I was like, man, that is a killer song, you know. Uh, but, of course, the characters they play, they're making fun of that lifestyle the way it was back then. But that's the way it was back then. I mean, that's the way uh, heavy metal and glam rock, whatever whatever you want to classify it as, that's how it was. I mean, you know... Uh, Big hair, cool guitar solos, uh, big shows, you know, great uh, pyrotechnics and great guitar solos on stage and all that. And, the, you know, when I really just kind of stepped out, out of the box and looked at it from a different perspective and just, you know, I said, man, that is freaking awesome. These, yeah, they're, they're a bunch of characters and they're kind of silly when they talk and all this stuff. You know, you got what, Lexi, Sticks. Uh, Michael Starr, amazing vocalist, and Satchel, of course, is just incredible guitar player. I mean, just amazing. Michael Starr's vocals is just out of this world, man. And and uh, so I started to go further down in that rabbit hole and research them on YouTube. And, uh, you know, they were doing uh, uh, some big festival in Germany or something. Uh, I don't know, sometime back. It might, have, it might be a couple years ago. I don't know. I can't remember. And it was just you thought it was like their version of Woodstock out there. It was so many people. And um, they come out there and they did their whole set. And I was just like, wow, man. And they did that, uh, that song 17 girls in a row and brought all them girls on the stage. And uh, I was like, yep, that's the way it was back in the day, you know? And it was, uh, but the, the, uh, the musicianship of these, of these musicians. I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, they are, they are the, the level of talent in that band is just unbelievable. I mean, they're, it's almost to the point where they're, they're just untouchable almost, you know, it's just like, my God. And when they do certain songs, it, it's reminiscing, reminiscent. Look, can I say that right? Reminiscent of a song that was written in the, like maybe by extreme or, you know, some of those bands, you know, it's kind of got that same kind of feel. You, a couple of chords are similar, and it's kind of got that same tempo. And uh, what is that song? Um, oh man, see, I'm just getting into this stuff, and uh, I think it's called "Fat Girl." I think it's the name of the song. And when it starts off, it sounds just like it's really similar to "Here I Go Again" by White Snake. If I have that title correct, don't hold me to it. I, like I said, this is I'm just. Get, you know, getting familiar with these song titles, and uh, I was like, "Man, that is amazing!" You know, it just it just sounds really good. That's the that's the style of music I grew up with. You know, in my in my teens and early twenties, and and all that. And um, of course, Satchel has his own model now. He he was with Kramer. He is now with Charvel. Uh, because I was I asked my son. I said, "Wasn't he with 
one or the other at one time, and he sweat. He said, "Yeah, I guess his contract ran out or something." And now he's with Charvel. Same type of guitar. He just with Charvel now. I looked him up on American Musical, and I think it was. Uh, I want to say it was thirteen ninety nine, something like that. And it had the. Uh, it's like a green. It looks good. I think it looks awesome as hell. That Bengal tiger stripe with the green, and the pickups are green and black, and it looks really awesome. And um, doesn't come with a case though, you know, Charvel. And I was like, man, what is the deal? How come the, you don't get a case with a guitar anymore? I don't know. Anyway, so um, I I did some more digging, and something else popped up on on my YouTube feed, and it was uh. What was it? It was live at Lexi's mom's garage or something like that, you know? And uh, they're supposedly playing in the garage, which, you know, come on now. You know they're not. But And it was like an acoustic set. You know, kind of it reminded me of uh, when Tesla, did, what was it called? Five-man acoustical jam back then in the early 90s, I believe. Right when uh, 80s rock and all that was on the decline, really. It was just on its last wave you know before grunge really took over everything um but it kind of reminded me something like that <clears throat> and i've always said this has always been one of my things you know if you can play that well on an acoustic like what satchel does if you haven't seen live from lexi's mom's garage you know just check it out for a few minutes just to see the uh the talent of these guys man i mean when you sound like that no big, big time pyrotechnics, no big time uh, guitar effects, and it just acoustic and acoustic bass and drums and the singer. And you sound like that, and the harmony sound that good. Man, that is, if you can pull that off acoustically, that is incredible. I mean, that takes, that's, that shows a lot, you know, shows and says a lot about that talent of that band. So, and of course, there was nothing but girls there, <laughs> you know? and they were all hot, you know. <laughs> and uh it is funny and uh if you watch that there's this one there's a couple of skits in there where they're you know acting or whatever you know being silly making passes at lexi's mom and all that and i said man she looks familiar i was like who is that and um when i the credits rolled it it said lexi's mom it said bobby brown and i said oh damn okay the bobby brown was the one that was in the warrant cherry pie video that's who uh, Bobby Brown is. If you're not familiar with her name, she let out. Uh, she she uh, put out a let out. She put out a book uh, a while back, and I got that audio book. She narrates it, and whew, man, you talk about a rock and roll chick living a lifestyle back then. Man, God Almighty, she uh, she she had her times around the block. We'll just put it that way. Many times around the block, but she was in that video, and I was kind of like, who is that? You know, and um. You know, I was like, well, she, you know, she's still attractive, you know. So, uh, but everything I keep pulling up on Steel Panther is uh, between a year and two years ago. So they must be not be too active. Maybe they're working on something right now. I don't know. But if you haven't seen, you're always going to be a whore on YouTube. I'll throw some uh, screenshots up here of the video. Of course, I can't play the video. I can't have anything of that nature or my video will get blocked. You know, so, uh, but it's just, it's, it's a, it's a lot of fun if you're in my age bracket, you know, and, uh, if you're a fan of eighties rock and, uh, heavy metal, uh, these guys are, are keeping that alive. They're keeping it alive. And I don't care what anybody says. I mean, in my opinion, they're, they they are carrying the torch for that style of music that I grew up with. Uh, nobody else is doing that. You know, uh, music nowadays, it's just everything's pop or country or whatever. And, and don't get me started on that, man. Oh, my God. Don't get me started on that. And I just, there was a, my wife, we was at my parents uh, when we was on vacation at the beginning of the month. Um, and it was some country music not awards, but country music festival, like this big concert with all these country music artists. And I don't get into that stuff, but my mom and dad had it on the TV and we was all in the living room watching it. And, you know, you're seeing this and that. And, and, uh, it's just, it's, it's just fake, man. It, it's just not all of them, 
but you could just and they brought this one guy comes out this big heavy set dude white guy uh ball cap and he's got a solo cup in his hand he and he's singing he sounded good for country he sounded really good but he's got that solo cup in his hand the whole time he's singing and he keeps raising it and all this and that and he don't you know i was like he's doing that because he can't dance so he's holding a cup he can't dance and um he gets done with the song and he takes it and throws it out in the crowd and i said damn he just threw liquor on them people or whatever the hell it was you know and uh so (laughs) i don't know man and and then they they bring a dude, some dude out there, and he's rapping in the middle of the song. I'm like, oh, man. It was just. Everything is so politically correct nowadays. Everybody's, you know, got to target everybody. Let's make sure these people are happy. Make sure these people are happy. Make sure these people. Okay, that's fine, man. But it's just, I remember the days of when uh, music was good, not just not just uh 80s rock and heavy metal that's what i like but there was other things that it was good too rap used to be really good the old school rap man run dmc ll cool j uh utfo i mean i'm you know i'm going way back you know uh that stuff was cool man and everything there was this shift that just started when i started to get in my uh late 20s early 30 there was this shift and it was just, I was like, man, what is this? And then, um, now one guy came around, I thought was cool that he, uh, I kind of didn't know. I was like, okay, is he wanting to be rap or is he wanting to be rock or is he wanting to be country? And that was kid rock, you know, but I have to admit when he came out, I liked his stuff. I really did. I thought it was killer. You know, he, he blended some great, he had some great guitar player, two great uh, guitar players in his group. He kept that the guitar element in there, and that had me hooked because it was it was rocking. He had some cool riffs, you know, like from maybe from Metallica or something. You know, it was, it was awesome. Um, so anyway, Steel Panther man, I even got online um, a couple of nights ago and ordered a shirt <laughs> off eBay <laughs> and uh, Steel Panther. So I'll be sporting that pretty soon. Um, they're awesome, man. I, I uh, like I said, I looked up satchel's custom uh was his signature model rather uh on american musical and it was like uh 18 no no 13.99 and uh you could do 18 payments of 75 dollars i was like 18 that's a year and a half you know and and it doesn't come with a case like i said it doesn't come with a case and i was like nah come on man come on charvel what's wrong with you man you gonna charge somebody 13.99 for a Signature model and, and and no case EVH same thing, you know. Um, quite a few of them. The only uh, the only brand that I can think of they used to. They might not anymore. They do on the upper tier guitars like the Jim Mo- Ibanez on the Jim models and stuff. You'll get a hard shell case. My Jim Junior, no case. I had to order a Gator case separate. Uh, well, you know whatever. But to each his own. But uh, anyway, still Panther man. If you if you haven't checked them out, which you know, I'm sure people have. A lot of people just brush them off as a joke, you know. But I'm telling you, man. Oh man, these guys are incredible, and I wish them the best of luck. I hope they stick around for a while, you know. Um, I believe that uh, Satchel, his, well, his real name is Russ. I'm not sure of his last name, and Michael Starr. They were in a the Atomic Punks together, I believe, a Van Halen tribute band some time back, and then they uh, broke loose of that and then formed Steel Panther. And it's just, uh, I looked up some other stuff on Satchel or you know Russ. Uh, he was in a Rush tribute band for a while, and I was like, man, that's Satchel because we you know we all know they wear wigs except Michael Starr. I think his hair is for real. Lexi, I don't know, kind of I don't know. It might be a wig too, but. It looks pretty real, but you know you can tell the drummer and Satchel wearing wigs. You can tell that. Um, anyway, it's fun to watch. I mean, if like I said, if you're in my age bracket, you know between uh, thirty five and forty five or whatever, you know, if you're in that bracket, then you remember that music. And if you liked it, then you should like Steel Panther. I mean, I was like, I'm a huge fan of them now. Within the past couple of weeks, yeah, a little late to the game. You know, better late than never, but I thought they were awesome. And uh, they have some really good songs, man, and, and they're really reminiscent of uh, certain songs back in the day. That's what I like. And I said, oh, man, that sounds like Here I Go Again kind of sort of on the intro. and Or this other song sounds like 
um, more than words, you know, it, it kind of got the same chord uh, progressions a little bit, but then they change it enough to where, oh, okay, it's different, you know, and the, but it's really cool, man. I actually seen them, they did a show, uh, this was at the House of Blues, and I guess, I guess it was LA, I guess, and it was the last show, and they were shutting down the House of Blues. Steel Panther played that show, and Nuno Betancourt came on stage and played uh, You Really Got Me. Uh, with the band and that was really cool man i thought that was cool and <clears throat> there were some big names in the crowd that i i was shocked i was like man them people went to see them and um it was awesome they had quite a few people come up and jam with them on stage and i thought it was really cool man these guys yeah their characters are funny and they're silly but like i said the musicianship of these guys is they've put in the hours man they are incredible incredible musicians so that's my take on Steel Panther. I hope you enjoyed this video, the Joe Wentz Project broadcast. I got these new headphones today, so hopefully you're hearing me okay. And um, hope you enjoy your day. Have a safe day. Until next time, my name's Joe. I'm out. See you later, man. Keep rocking. Bye-bye.